Hi mathematicians, this is Mr. Almeida. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, solving word problems. Now, these are technically really simple word problems, but if you try to approach them in the method that you've used in the past, where when you see numbers, you begin writing expressions and operating with them right away, um, without trying to really think about what's going on visually, then these problems are going to be a challenge. So these are called challenging word problems because if you use the traditional approach of just using numbers and operations, it's going to be really difficult to uh, figure out these problems. However, we're going to employ some visual models um, in a way of solving problems called model drawing so that you can better understand what's going on within the problem. So the first step with um, model drawing is you definitely want to identify the who and the what uh, that's involved in the problem and you just read the whole problem and figure out who and what's involved in the problem okay then uh, you're going to draw your bars and bars are simply going to be rectangles that's all they are going to be are rectangles okay um, and then these bars you can actually break into equal parts and put labels. The next step is to label the bars with the information that you've been given within the text. Um, something to this effect right here. Okay. Uh, and then you can do this with either length markers, brackets, or braces. All right. And they look like this. You can either do this in your drawing. You can either do this. Or you can do this. Okay, and this will mark off the part of the model that you're drawing or the part of the unit that you're drawing um, to figure out what the label that goes there is all about. And then lastly, in your model, you're going to put a question mark in the model. This is exactly what you're trying to find the answer to. All right, so don't forget to put that question mark in your model. All right, so let's read this word problem. Let's figure out what's going on said, Richard spent three-fourths of a sum of money and gave away three-fourths of the remainder. Um, he had $6 left. How much money did he have at first? Okay, so after doing a read of this problem, I know who's involved in the problem. I know that Richard is involved. And I know that his money's involved. But what unit of money are we dealing with? We're dealing with, in this case, the dollars. Okay, so it's Richard's, num Richard's dollars. All right, so I'm gonna put that as my label for the entire bar. Richard's dollars. All right, and then I'm going to draw his entire bar. And this bar will represent his dollars. All right, now I'm going to read the problem very carefully and when I come to important information um, or too much information, I'm going to stop myself and I'm going to say stop and I'm going to make sense of that information if I can. If I can't, then I'm going to um, move on. But if I can, I'm going to put a, put, put a check mark after that so that I can figure out um, the rest of the problem while taking care of, while thinking of what I've already taken care of. All right, so here we go. Um, remember to stop when you come across important, uh, too much information or um, a piece of information that you can make sense of right away or any punctuation marks. All right, here we go. Richard spent six, three fourths of a sum of money. Stop. Um, he spent three fourths of a sum of money. So this right here is his sum of money right here. And I know that I'm going to have to take three-fourths of this money right here. So what does that mean? It means I'm going to partition the money, in Richard's money, into four equal parts, and then mark off three of them with the word spent. All right, so let me just underline that right there. And that's where I stopped. All right, so let me just break his money into four equal parts. and then mark off three of them. This is th represents three-fourths of his money. This right here represents three-fourths of his money. And I'm gonna mark off three of them as spent. 
All right. Did I make sense of the information that was given to me right here? Richard spent three fourths of his money. Yes. So I'm gonna place a check mark right here. This allows me to make sure that I'm taking care of every piece of information that I'm given. And if I can't use it, then I'll, I'll go back to it. But if I can use it, then I'll put a check mark um, after I've modeled it. All right, next it says he gave away three fourths of the remainder. Well, the remainder of his money, but what remains? Oh, in the model, this remains right here. So it says that he gave away three fourths of the remainder. Well, the remainder is only one part but I need to partition that into four equal parts. Well, first I ask, I only have one part, right? Is one divisible by four? The answer is no. So therefore I'm going to have to break this into four equal parts. But because I wanna make every single um, part of these have equal parts so that I can have um, all units being the same size, um, I'm going to have to partition all of these into four equal parts, all right? afterwards, um, but let me just mark off what I need to first. All right, so I stopped right there, and it said three-fourths of the remainder. So I'm going to take the remainder and break it into four equal parts. And I'm going to mark off three out of those four, and I'm going to call that gave away. All right. And remember, whatever I've done to this piece right here, I'm gonna do to all these other pieces just because I want them to all have the same um, same size of the parts. All right, so I've taken care of Richard gave away three fourths of the remainder, checky check. And then finally it says he had $6 left. Stop. Okay, so he had $6 left. Well, this right here is what he had left. So I'm gonna mark off one of these parts with a label of left. Okay, and have I made sense of that? Well, not fully yet. I haven't put the $6 left, so I'm gonna put $6 right by the left. And I'll have to put the dollar symbol because the dollars are already over here. All right, so now I am going to place check mark in the text because I've made sense of that. Lastly, the question is how much money did he have at first? So I'm gonna underline the entire question and how much money he had at first would be all of this money. So therefore, I'm gonna put a length marker from here to here, from the beginning of his money to the end of his money and put a question mark there because that's what's going to answer the question and that's at first. Okay, so now whenever you have a model, you want to look at your model and you wanna see is there a certain number of parts that I can match with a particular number of, in this case, the unit is dollars. So let's put dollars there. All right, and I'll, I'll go through it and I'll, I'll figure out if there's a certain number of dollars that are given to us with a certain number of parts. Well, the spent has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 parts but there's no number of dollars that's associated with that. So I can't use that. Um, next, I'm gonna look at the gave away. And the gave away was one, two, three parts uh, with how many dollars? No dollars, okay? So I can't, I can't use that. Um, the left has one part and is that associated with a certain number of dollars? Oh, yes it is, right there, six dollars. So therefore, I'm going to be able to use that as my opening statement. One part, corresponds to six dollars okay now when you have this um, this setup here you want to make sure that you have um, all uh, you want to get all of your parts down to one at first and then you can figure out the number of parts you have to uh, figure out to answer the question so it just so happens that my number of parts is already down to one part so I don't have to get it down to one part if I had to, however, like say this were five parts give us 
I'd have to take my five parts and divide them by five, and that would get me to one part right here. And then I could do the same thing to six. I would do six divided by five, and that would give me the number of dollars that correspond to one part. But that's not the case here. I already have one part, so I'm okay. Now I'm going to write down the number of parts I have to find to answer the question. All right, so the question is at first, and let's figure out how many parts are associated with that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen parts. So therefore, my next line is going to be sixteen parts correspond to question mark dollars. All right, and remember the goal in this line. Um, it is to get it down to one part. It's already down to one part. So I figure out what I have to do to one part to get to 16 parts. Through this process, it's either going to be multiplication or division. So in this case, I'm going to multiply 1 by 16 to get to 16. So let me just show that. Therefore, I will, um, I will have to multiply the $6 uh, dollars by 16 as well. Okay? So that'll be 6 times 16, which equals, let me just do the calculation here. Even if I can do it mentally, I want to make sure that I'm not making any computation errors. 96, okay? And that's $96. So let me put $96 here into the model. And let's see if this actually makes sense. Well, 96 divided by... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, if that comes out to be 6, then, then one of these pieces is 6, and that's accurate. And that does um, mentally check out. Uh, you can also do it on paper to figure out if that checks out. All right, so it looks like I found the answer to my question, and it's $96. Uh, Richard had $96 at first. So let me write an answer statement for that. And for those of you wondering why I put the dollar symbol to the right of 96 uh, is because in mathematics, uh, we typically write down the number and then the units. Um, however, customarily, when it comes to American culture and uh, the United, in the United States, we put the dollar symbol to the left of the number. Um, it's the same as saying like, like five cats instead of cats five. Like I have five cats instead of I have cats five. Um, just mathematically speaking. All right, and so this is how we solve model uh, drawings. This is how we solve word problems with models. Um, so you're definitely going to want to, in looking at this model, we can actually answer a number of questions now. I could ask, how much money did Richard spend? Well, if I wanted to find the answer to that question, I already have my parts down to one, so I already got it down to one part. And I know that one part is $6, so what I would do for work is just um, find 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 parts. So 1 times 12 is 12, and then 6 times 12 would be $72. So Richard would spend $72 there if I wanted to um, ask the question for how much money Richard spent. If I wanted to figure out how much money Richard gave away... I know that each one of these uh, parts is worth $6, so he has one, two, three parts for giving away. Therefore, one times three is three. And then I would do six times three, which is $18. So Richard gave away $18. And if you add up the $72 here, the $18 here, that's $90 so far. And then the 90 plus the $6 he has left comes out to be $96. So model drawing actually allows you to Yes, you can answer the question that's given, but it also allows you to answer a whole number of other questions um, that you could be asked to figure out as well. So I hope that you enjoyed uh, this video, and I, I, I look forward to you solving some really challenging, worth, challenging word problems, but we all know now that they're not really challenging. They're just requiring a different method of solving the problem. All right, take care, mathematicians, and have a great day.